Sorry about the delay. Okay, my name is Kenneth Gears. I work for NCIS and I've got a, a nice job in Estonia. So I've been there since the uh, since 2007, a couple of months after the, the infamous uh, cyber attacks. Uh, so in May this year, we, we held a cyber defense exercise. It particularly wanted to look at some a cyber terrorist scenario and uh, particularly uh, with uh, critical information infrastructure, some SCADA elements. Uh, so uh, we're in northern Europe, we're pretty far north, I'll show you in a second, but we, uh, in cooperation with the Swedish National Defense College and uh, an organization that's sort of the equiv Swedish equivalent of DARPA, uh, we, we, we put together a, uh, uh, an effort that took about, you know, some, for some people maybe up to a year uh, of work. But here's Sweden and Estonia. Uh, there's Germany down there, uh, Mother Russia to the right, and Santa Claus just above us, kind of give you some uh, perspective. Estonia is about on uh, southern Alaska latitude in the Baltic Sea there in the middle. Here's a picture of Estonia uh, in the snow, uh, and we had lots of snow uh, last year, that was as much as about 100 years. Uh, so just two slides on the 2007 cyber attacks. So if you're not familiar with them, there was a, a Russian war, or a Soviet war memorial that they moved outside of the, uh, uh, the center of town and, it, and it, it upset the local Russians and Russia uh, exact, uh, as a country who view the World War II as, you know, it, in greater terms than just Soviet or, or uh, Stalinist uh, a legacy, they, they see it as real national achievement. So they were very upset about it and uh, there was a, a corresponding cyber attack which uh, wasn't the biggest or the most sophisticated cyber attack in history. However, uh, Estonia sort of uh, uh, occupies a special place, I think, in, in the history of cyberspace and cyber attacks just because it was one of those events when uh, you know, a, a major international crisis or uh, mid-level international crisis kind of spilled over into a cyber attack that was intended to hurt a country. Uh, and so, so anyway, it's a, it's a good case study, all for a bunch of reasons. We could talk about it later if you like, but Estonia is small, homogenous, very wired. They, they made this, the jump from sort of archaic Soviet technology to, uh, to an E-Estonia, that's their goal. So a couple of their achievements, the highest per capita online elections, um, you can pay taxes and etc. with your phone and your pin calculator, 98% of banking is done online, uh, and Skype is Estonian originally, for instance. Uh, here is the Cyber Center of Excellence. If uh, We've had uh, some seminars, some training, we have a, a, a botnet mitigation course uh, right now, and uh, um, a couple of conferences on, on uh, cyber conflict. Uh, so, one of the questions about cyber attacks is whether or not they're a threat to national security. And really, the, the, it, it's, a, it's, a, a, uh, it's a fascinating and worthwhile uh, discussion stream to follow. Uh, because you have re re people who say it's the end of the world and others really who, who think it's complete hype. Uh, and of course, it's somewhere in the middle. Uh, but uh, one of the things about the cyber defense exercise is we wanted to, uh, you know, make some progress on uh, um, uh, clarifying that situation. What we do know, though, is that, uh, you know, the, the web, I don't want to dwell on this, but is growing every day. And when you have electricity to elections sort of also riding on cyber now, you do have something at stake uh, to protect. So uh, national security thinking is uh, still to be determined, but if you saw a really great uh, um, keynote at Black Hat the other day by General Hayden, I, I think they're going to put it online by today. I, I encourage you to, to watch it because uh, the former CIA and NSA director is actually uh, was quite insightful on this, uh, on this very topic. Uh, let's see. CDXs are difficult uh, to stage, there's no doubt about it, and I think each one of them is unique. You really have to simulate everything, uh, and the problem with IT is it changes every day, of course, and so, so will your CDX. Um, the military, of course, is uh, the original founder of the Internet, and they use uh, computers for everything now to, to uh, even uh, stage complex uh, geopolitical uh, and uh, military scenarios. But the question is, of course, is, is how well you can model uh, the real world and, and uh, well, more on that later. So 
some of the structure of the cyber defense exercise, which you may or not be familiar with, uh, you have uh, friendly forces, hostile forces, uh, you have to have sort of a team dedicated to the infrastructure, uh, and at least a management team that, that sort of oversees everything and uh, determines, tries to determine its significance. Uh, the blue teams, these are the primary uh, um, targets for training, and usually they are you know, they're people like yourselves that do a system administration and, and computer security for a living, and their goal is to defend the CIA of the networks. Um, the red team, its goal is to undermine that CIA. And uh, within the virtual environment, the cool thing is, is not only is malicious code authorized, but it's highly encouraged. Um, there's so many things to talk about. I mean, one of the basic things is whether or not it's a white box or a black box test, and that, that goes to, uh, really whether the, the, uh, the red team has prior knowledge of the networks or not. In our case, uh, we wanted to simulate some prior reconnaissance, so we gave them uh, three weeks uh, to look at the, uh, at the network topology. The white team is, uh, I was on the white team, I'm an analyst really, and so, but I've been doing cyber analysis uh, for, for a long time. Um, and so, we're supposed to uh, kind of make everything uh, run on time, but also give it some, some punch. And, and of course, in the end, it's the white team that's going to talk to the, uh, the policymakers and those funding the exercise uh, and try to explain why, why it was important and, and worthwhile. Uh, the green team, though, makes everything happen, really. I mean, you can't stage a CDX with analysts, right? Uh, otherwise, you wind up with only hype. Uh, so it's the green team that actually connects all the wires together, and these guys were at the, uh, at the Swedish equivalent of DARPA in the middle of Sweden in a place called Linköping. The scenario is important uh, because, uh, you know, what, what do you want to say? What is your, your goal? And then how are you going to write the story afterwards? Uh, and and it, it, it's, it's key because... Uh, you know, it goes to resources and cost and whether or not sort of the threat is sort of appropriate to the fear uh, and the, uh, the investments toward uh, mitigating that threat. Uh, because, you know, really one lone hacker is, is probably not going to uh, yeah, sort of allocate any congressional uh, money, that threat. But when you look at a foreign military or intelligence service, uh, it's quite different. Uh, and if your, your scenario uh, decides one way or another on this question, really, then uh, everything changes. So a little bit about cyber war, and these are my own thoughts, but you know, I, I think you know, uh, cyber attack by itself is, is really not very much, but it's you know, the real world effects, uh, and those can be as, as, as broad and as deep as the imagination of the attacker. So cyber espionage is, is uh, um, well, uh, governments are at it across the world because why? It's, it's, there's a really high return on investment uh, in cyber espionage. Um, and uh, I also think propaganda is really key to look at from the standpoint of, uh, you know, everyone at the Pentagon anyway is talking about narrative today. It's not whether you can go beat up your enemy on the field of battle only, it's whether or not you can you know, win the hearts and minds both of your own population and the population on, on the, on the uh, other side as well. Uh, so, you know, this was known for a long time. This is not new information. But if you go to the art of war, he says, look, you, so you have fire and you're going to use fire to attack. Well, there's all kinds of things you can do with fire. Let me just give you some examples. So you can hit soldiers, their stores, baggage trains, etc. And finally, of course, you can just drop, uh, hurl dropping fire amongst the enemy. And of course, all of these, you could think of a direct or indirect analogy in cyberspace. So just a couple of screenshots uh, to, to prove to you that uh, cyber conflict is alive and well around the world. This is in, in 2000, there was uh, three Israeli soldiers that were kidnapped in Lebanon and Israeli hackers, you know, th this really kicked off, I think, sort of a new period to a certain degree. They, they took out their frustration a little bit in cyberspace and this is the Hezbollah, so the organization which would have kidnapped the uh, soldiers in Lebanon, their website and it was an attack against it. And, well, you know, you always throw around the word sophisticated, but this one really was to a certain degree because uh, the, the, uh, the site administrators really had a tough time um, 
uh, undoing it. And when they wanted to move their site to a, another place on the internet, they discovered that somebody had already bought up uh, various spellings and misspellings of Hezbollah before the attack. Um, so even within NATO, and I, the Cyber Center of Excellence basically supports uh, NATO, so roughly 30 countries, uh, Europe and North America, you know, you have conflict between Turkey and Greece. Um, you have uh, cyber conflict on behalf of ideas. In 2008, when Lithuania outlawed uh, Soviet symbols in the country, the first thing that hundreds and hundreds of sites throughout the country, including in the government, uh, were defaced with Soviet propaganda. Uh, within countries, you have, uh, you know, calls for freedom or, or anti-government uh, um, appeals. Uh, you have a guy here, Gary McKinnon, in, in, in uh, the UK, uh, who literally is hacking on behalf of all of us, sort of the people of the world. He was convinced that the, the Pentagon knows about UFOs, and he was getting into the network to find proof of it. Here's a South American hacker group that is literally hacking on behalf of God. Uh, they have thousands of defacements around the world, and they always leave a religious message. So, 2007, you had the Estonia case that was really the business case model of a cyber attack. In 2008, a year later, you have the military case model. And, um, and so, really, it, it, it was important, and it's not like the Pentagon didn't know about this uh, prior. However, Georgia has this place in cyber history as well as clearly showing that any military conflict or operation in the future is going to have a cyber uh, dimension. Uh, there's no uh, two ways about it today. Uh, so this question of an electronic or digital Pearl Harbor is also kind of funny because we've also been debating that just like the uh, hype question for a long time. And while if you missed this one in 2007 in October, the Israeli Air Force destroyed the, uh, the Syrian uh, alleged nuclear reactor. Uh, and it's widely uh, alleged in the, the open press uh, that, uh, that a cyber attack played a, a, a critical role in taking down the Syrian air defense uh, before the planes crossed the border. Um, so this was just you know, last week uh, on Wired Magazine, which is in general uh, sort of a skeptic on the whole cyber war thing, but just some information on how uh, you know, how widespread uh, the vulnerabilities of SCADA systems are. And I threw that in here because it, our CDX looks at that issue. Uh, so just some high-level thinking about cyber warfare. You know, I think the Internet is vulnerable. Cyber defenses are uh, relatively weak. I think that's one of the issues with cyber wars. It really kind of turns on its head the, the historical notion of defense has all the, uh, the uh, home field advantage, essentially, like in sports. Uh, it's, it's opposite in cyberspace because of the an anonymity issue, etc. Uh, so uh, non-state actors, you can't forget about them. But, but really, cyber attack, again, is, is uh, uh, it's sort of in the, uh, uh, it could be different every time, essentially. And so the question mark is key. So now to the, the CDX. And what, what is the CDX all about? I think what you really want to do, especially on the infrastructure side and on the white team side, before you sort of uh, lift the gates and let the horses run, is uh, you want, you want to, to develop something that's credible. Something that, you know, because these cost a lot of money and time, and so you want those who invested money in it and those who read the uh, after-action report uh, to feel like it was, it was worthwhile. Um, so, in particular, uh, that's going to be real-world impact, I think. And then I think a cyber attack truly can range from a uh, minor annoyance to probably a national security crisis. I mean, if you think about... For, for instance, the photos of the Abu Ghraib prison in Iraq. I mean, those did more damage to the political interests of the United States than all hacks combined, maybe, in history. And that was not a hack, even. It was, but what it, what it did was show the power of the web to take a, a, a picture or a, a well-written story, and it can be in everyone's living room today. Uh, and that's probably the most powerful cyber attack uh, that exists today. So uh, one of the things about uh, the nation state simulation uh, is uh, that military and government agencies, they, they're, they're much, much more powerful than, than an individual and organization. And they're, not only are they going to have all their bases covered on, on IT, but then they're, they're going to be uh, 
uh, supported by experts in, in other disciplines. And this goes to the heart, for instance, of SCADA as well. I mean, you really would have to know something that is really pretty esoteric uh, insider type information if you're going to go after a factory. I mean, you can't expect uh, to manipulate uh, um, sort of SCADA controls without um, some, some knowledge of, 